Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a double bevel, bevel leaf scroll. And this is going to go from one side and it's going to transition and go around the other. And with the extra special thing, we're going to do a bit of a drifted center or a square drifted center. I hope that makes sense enough. I've got a piece in the fire that is 12 inches long or 300 mils long with a center punch mark right in the center or 150 millimeters from the end or six inches, if you will, from the end. So it's 12 inches long by six inches in from one end, or that is again, 300 millimeters by 150 millimeters. And I'm working with a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat bar stock, mild steel. And for you across the pond, that is 25 mil by six mil, roughly. So I'm gonna be using a small tool like this. It's a small slitter. You guys have seen me do this uh, multiple times. In fact, I made a video on making one of these. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And then for the center detail also, we are going to take and use a drift. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the center portion first because that is going to be one of the hardest portions of this. And by the time we scroll everything up, it'll be difficult to get back in very easily at that place to clean it up. So I've got my piece good and hot. I'm gonna come here, gonna find my big center punch mark. I'm gonna drive this sledding punch down to the anvil's face. And I'm gonna flip it over, look for the bullseye. And I'm gonna drive it back through the opposite way. You're almost there, so close to punching that little slug out. We'll go over the pritchel hole of the anvil real quick. To give it a knock or two more. Oh, it's just wanting to stay in there, ladies and gentlemen. Let that cool for a second and then we'll drive that plug out. I've found that this stuff shears a lot nicer, shears out of the hole a lot nicer when the piece is cold. You can get it to release from the sides. That's a lot better. The reason for slot punching this opposed to, how do you wanna say, uh, just regular using a regular hole punch, a standard punch, is we wanna preserve as much material as possible. So I'll get this heated back up and we will finish punching out that slug in the next heat. Okay, we've got this piece getting hot again. This time I'll come to the hardy hole so you guys can see a little bit better. And we're just gonna drive this piece a little bit on through. Knock it out. That should be large enough that we can now start, that we can insert our square drift. This square drift, by the way, is what you would call a half inch or 12.5 millimeter drift. And we're gonna start driving this piece in. There we go, got that off. And so we're starting to create that little square punch on the diamond hole through the center of that. So that's going pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and heat that piece right back on up, bring it up to another full heat, and then we're gonna to continue to drive this half inch drift. Now this is just a mild steel drift, it's just square with a little bit of a taper put on. We're gonna drive it in a lot further, and then I'm going to use a hand hammer in the edge of the anvil to kind of hammer the outsides to a square like corner with this drift being in the hole there. We want the drift to be in the hole while we hammer up the sides and you guys will see how that looks here in just a second. Okay, so now we're gonna take our drift I'm gonna reinsert it in here. I'll go ahead and drive this drift down a little bit more until it's at its full dimensions. 
Then I'm gonna pick up my hand hammer. And I wanna put it up about even with that drift. And I wanna start hammering this on each of the various sides. Don't worry, we'll clean this up later. You wanna re-drift it just a bit. Make sure it stays square in the hole if you can. And now we'll come, again, we'll come back and we'll just keep dressing this up until we get the looks, until we get the looks that we are after. Again, we're just trying to get that squared up on the outside corners. It makes the whole piece just a little more believable. This will take a few heats to do this and do it proper, but that's okay. Just take your time, relax, and take as many heats as you need. So we've got that through. You can see it kind of getting a little bit slanted because we need to put it up on this edge and go ahead and hammer it back down this direction. So we'll go ahead and get that heated back up and do that now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the drift back through. And now I'm gonna turn it up on the edges that need to be corrected. I'm gonna hammer that back. Again, this is gonna take a lot of back and forth until you get it right, but that is okay. That's what we want. Drive that drift in a bit more. And this will all look a lot better once you go to do the bevel scrolls. So don't worry too much about galling or anything like that because all that's going to get hammered out of this piece anyhow. There we go. So we put just a little bit of a point on each side. On the outside, it's a little hard to catch that on camera, but we are going to now draw down from this piece. We're going to draw out to the outside edge in a symmet asymmetrical taper on one side. When we flip it around, it'll get flipped to full 180 and we'll do an asymmetrical taper on the other side. So let's get that hot and do that now. Now that we have that piece good and hot, we're going to go ahead and draw down that asymmetrical taper. You just want to work that down nice, hard, hot, and fast. So I'm going to go ahead and kick on the blower. I'm going to talk through this point while we get this up good and hot again. Again, excuse the blower noise. So the secret to the reason why we want this asymmetrical taper and not just a straight taper or a symmetrical taper is for the scroll, the final bit of that bevel leaf scroll. That is the purpose behind that. So basically we're gonna draw out that edge more as it goes around. If I don't burn it off in the process, eh? Plenty of burning. Still getting used to this coke and having the blower run continuous and demonstrating at the same time.
All right, so now we need to thin it down here. So we need to use the edge of the anvil to do that. Go ahead and drive this material down a little bit and thin that out so it matches the rest of the taper. So I'm gonna cool off this tip. I should also mention at this point that you want to be careful of that square that you made, that drifted hole. You don't want to take and distort that too much as you hammer on it. So try to make sure that your tongs stay parallel or the bar stock you're working on is staying parallel to the anvil and you don't have anything canted up or canted down. That's getting there, it's getting a lot hotter. We're almost there. I'll take this moment in time to say thank you for watching the video if you've made it this far in the video. Uh, thank you to all of my loving and adoring supporters here on YouTube, part of this blacksmith family that we have created here on the net. And uh, just greatly appreciate you all being here and watching this video. Here we go. Again, asymmetrical. Try to drive down close to that arch there. Driving it straight down. Again, we don't want to distort it too much, but we want that piece to be more pronounced. It looks like that's gotten more off to one side. It became more symmetrical, but that's okay. We can fix that just by pushing it off to one side there. Now this is where I'm also going to mention, you want it to narrow in width, but thicken slightly. You don't want to dress out all your thickness here, otherwise you won't have enough to pull off the bevel. Hopefully that makes sense. So we got that dressed up here. that all straightened out. It's looking good. Good enough for our scroll work that we're going to end up doing. Now we need to go ahead and flip it around and do the other side. So doing that I'm going to cool off that end almost completely. And now we're going to draw out the other side. It's e Trust me, it's way easier to do it now than it is after you've got a scroll on the end there. We'll get that good and hot, and we'll draw it out. Okay, so I have this piece. Went ahead and drew out the other leg off camera. Uh, I figured once you've seen one side, you've seen them both. I'm trying to shorten up the video a little bit. It's getting a little long-winded here. So now it's time to take and go ahead and start scrolling these pieces up. So it's going to be a fairly loose scroll, so we're not going too tight here. We want to go ahead and roll out a nice big arching loose scroll. You do want it to be still scroll-ish, starting to look like it's got the good form of a scroll, but you don't want to take and make this too tight right now at this point in time. If you make this too tight at this point in time, by the time it scrolls up, by the time the bevel's installed on this piece, you'll be sad that you did. So the most important part of a bevel leaf scroll, well, there's a lot of important parts, but one of the important parts is a better way of saying it. Uh, the Beverly, bevel leaf scroll is starting with a good scroll to begin with. So this piece has grown in thickness. It's not quite six mil anymore or quarter inch thick. It has grown to somewhere around the realm of about five sixteenths inch thick, so that's probably what, eight mil, somewhere in there. And since it's about that thick, that's going to give us a lot of mass to go ahead and draw out. So we've done the one side, we're good there. We'll go ahead and before we start beveling that side, we'll flip it around and we'll do this side now as well. Consequently, this is a great way, and some of you may have recognized this form as well as being a 
what they used to call uh, blah 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 a shutter dog if you will this is one way of taking and getting to that type of uh, deal there if you will you can end up making a shutter dog very much using this same process here uh, although I would suggest instead of you know doing a square hole there you do a round one so this way it can swivel and pivot to its heart's content So we have this piece nice and hot now, and we're going to scroll it up the opposite direction. Again, you want to make this a scroll, so you want to invest in making it look like a scroll if you can, right off the bat. <laughs> I know that seems redundant, but a lot of people will try to fake it till they make it at the end of the process when you should have done most of your work up front trying to make sure that that scroll was perfect to start with and then once you get to the beveling portion it doesn't look so hot and once it's to that beveling portion you're just trapping any of those flat spots in there now I had a question about what why wouldn't you show how to get rid of flat spots or that portion of you know the deal in one of my last videos where I showed a bevel leaf scroll on one end and the simple answer is I've already shot a video a long time back I'll put the link to that in the description on bevel leaf scrolls I've done these quite a few times and it gets a bit redundant to have to constantly rehearse and making a video incredibly long doing all the same techniques all over again and explaining them in detail. That's why I break up simple techniques like this, so this way I don't have to go through them in detail when I get into future, future projects. We'll leave that blower run. It's looking pretty good. Just gotta give it a little more oomph there. Work it back towards itself a little more. There we go. It looks about even with the other one. That looks good. There really isn't any flats in there. So now we go there. Now if you're looking for something simple and you don't want to try the bevel leaf at this point, this is a interesting or pretty enough option that you can have. But we're gonna go that extra mile just because we can and just because we say that we want to and we're going to now make those bevel leaves. I really like the form of a bevel leaf. I feel that they're a pretty, they're a real pretty scroll. They've got a lot of organic-like nature to them, and that's the part I particularly enjoy. So we're going to go to the far side of the anvil, and we're going to work this around. We're going to start out at the thickest portion back here and work to the tip. But before we do that, I guess you would say we're going to start at the tip and kind of get a little bevel on that first to start so, if it, so it don't tuck under. So here we go. We start at the tip and drive a little bit of a point. Start the bevel by going there. And now that we've got that established, now we're going to start out at the outside edge of this thing and really drive it down. up those hammer marks on the face there. And make sure our transition looks nice into the end. It gives it a lot more pop and dimension and it looks real nice. So now we're going to go ahead and heat that back up. Take one last heat on that to shape it out nicely and we'll be good to go. 
Now you may find moving to a smaller hammer with a smaller cross section here is handy once you get to doing this stage. That's perfectly okay. The point is to create a really nice scroll. So switch up hammers if you must at this point. Don't be hammer specific. We're just trying to take and create the best scroll we can because we put all this effort into this piece. I'm just making sure my bevels stay the same. As you can see, I'm not really well in this thing, except back here at the very end of it. Slowly work that forward. And that's going to create a really nice clean transition there. And again, we may have to dress this up here a little bit, and that's okay. Just take your time and do a good job of it. Well, I'm not going to bore you with all the cleanup work, but you want to look at that transition of line where this piece here, it kind of cuts across and then goes into our scroll. We want to keep that consistent. So for all you knife guys out there, this should be easy to do if you're good at doing bevels. And this is just me planishing. I'm really just bouncing my hammer on the surface, trying to clean up that line. And that's probably good enough for YouTube's purposes. I'm gonna do that. Good to go. I'll call that it on that one. Hopefully you guys can see the clear difference. There's a lot more form to this now, and it definitely stretched it compared to where we started. So this is why you want to watch where you're going. See? If I rolled this too tight, this would already have been digging into here. So that's why we left it open like this, so this way it'll scroll around nicely and finish out. Now we'll flip the piece around and do that to the other side. Okay, and again, we're going to start our bevel at the tip. So this way, once it gets tucked around there, we don't have to worry about it too much. Come back around the bend a bit. Good. And now we're going to forge down. So hopefully you guys can see that going around. Do not be afraid to take another heat. There is no shame in taking three, four, five, six, twelve heats if you need to, to make this piece be exactly what it needs to be for the job, the client, or whatever piece you're working on. Sometimes it's just heating that piece up a little more is all it takes. And a lot of times that separates the difference between a piece being done and a piece being finished. Just like so. We're just going to clean that bevel up a little bit more.
and hopefully you guys like that tutorial. If you did, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. I always love hearing from you. And as always, if you'd like to support what we do here at Christ Center Ironworks, a great way of doing that is checking out our website, blacksmithpdfs.com, and consider purchasing an ebook or a power hammer plan over there or a tooling bundle. Uh, Jessica and I greatly appreciate you either way. Another great way is just sharing these videos around with your friends if you found them helpful or, and or informative. Ay ay ay. Let's let that fall to the floor. Why not, Roy? Really? Give me a second, folks. Pick that up and show you the final result. Good. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun and entertaining. And as always, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.